Yeah, my mother uh, told me because they were bought, they were, you know, they were coming around. The FBI was asking her friends, and you know, so she knew they were on her tail. You know what I mean? On her trail, whatever. So um, she told me what to say, like if they came around to bother me. Because I think they'd already come around once, you know. But this, this was, I was, I don't know how old I was, maybe I was 11 or so, 12. I forget how old she was when she, just say, I have nothing to say to you. you know? Don't, and don't change the words at all, no matter what they say. And she made me repeat it. I have nothing to say to you. I have nothing to say to you. Those were like the magic words. Uh, I think the, those were the words that were, were, had been recommended by people who had been, um, uh, who were being um, prosecuted, persecuted, investigated, whatever, by the FBI. They had found this was the, those were the magic words. Because if you say, I don't know anything about it, they can then later accuse you of lying, right? Maybe you do know something about it. Or if you, you know, you got to be very, you know, the most innocent reply can actually get you into trouble. But first of all, it's very dirty to go around asking uh, somebody's son or a family, you know, to say something. Supposing, supposing I did know something, I heard something, maybe I'd seen something. And this got my mother into trouble and then she went to prison because of it, right? That would be a terrible thing for me, right? So what, are they, what the hell are they asking a kid or something like that, right? But anyway, that's just to show you what kind of bad faith they're using, no? Did they ever come but the, anyway, they came around, I think, yeah, and then I said, I have nothing to say to you. Then the FBI the guy said to me, no, no, we only, no, 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 that's not what we, we only want to, blah, 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 we only want, blah, blah. I said, I have nothing to say to you. And then he knew that I, I was prepared, and he looked at the other agent, and they sh shrugged their shoulders and left, you know. Yeah, I admire songwriters. I mean, I was just listening with Miyoko to the song today, uh, the song by The Temptations, you know, that, by Runaway Child Running Wild. You know that song? No. I have it. If you, you want to hear it, I can play it. But... You know, I really admire the creativity of these songs. This is a song about a kid who runs away from home, you know? And uh, what I admire is the, whoever made up this song, how did he think it's going to make money for him, right? Because a kid who runs away from home is not going to buy this record, right? And, and, that's right, so there's no money from him. And, I, and you would think a grown-up is not going to be interested in a, a song about a kid running away from home, right? So where's the money? You know? But they see, no, it, but actually it's a kind of an allegory, you know, about our lives, you know what I mean? Very deep. These songwriters I really uh, respect, you know? Because it's hard work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always wanted to write some songs. I was telling Evans, uh, Larry Evans, this was back in the 60s, I remember. I said, you know, I listen to all these songs, and I wish I could write that, but I, I try to write something, I try to think of something, and like, I guess nothing comes out. And he says, yeah, because you haven't lived. <laughs> and I started thinking about it, he's right. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is true, you know. But, uh, no, I just, the thing that I, I just, where do they, these people get these ideas? How do they know this is going to put money in their pocket? It's just the opposite of chess. Chess, you're, you can be running up the same moves uh, in seconds, 20 moves that's been played a million times before. You know? It's, uh, so... I mean, I'm not saying there's no creativity in chess. Of course, there is, but it, 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 it's much more structured, and, and you know, you're much, it's much more uh, 
difficult to get it out. It's because, it, you, you know, but this is the creativity of pop songs I really admire. Because in a very few words, these words are as precise as a mathematical formula. You know? So that, that's, that's a part of the fascination for me. If a song doesn't have good lyrics, it usually won't interest me. I'm very interested in the lyrics. But on the other hand, I'm not very interested in poetry. Mm, you're not. No, I'm not. I don't care. So, but maybe this is my substitute for poetry. I don't know. You know? It is, it, it is poetry, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm not interested in poetry that's not set to music. It doesn't turn me on at all, and I can't remember it or anything, you know? Somehow I consider it effeminate, you know? I really don't like the chess players in general. They're not my kind of people. They are very petty. They, uh, you know, they're, they're mean-minded, petty, small-minded, stupid. I don't care. I, I listen to, a lot of times I listen to the radio. I listen to jazz musicians and they really seem to love each other. But the chess players don't love each other very much at all. Uh, part of it is the competition, and a part of it is just the kind of people who go into chess, you know? But it seems to, pe to me the people in the, in the show business world are not as mean-minded toward each other as the, uh, people in, ch in the chess world. That's my clear impression. They're more in competition uh, with themselves uh, to do the best they can do whatever, rather than with other people. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if I were in show business, I'd find out that they're bastards too, you know. But that's my impression, you know. But I think Miyoko said something the other day which is very true. Come back, yeah. No. Uh, I was just talking about all this backbiting and mean-mindedness in the chess world, you know? But Miyoko made a perceptive remark. She says, uh, it's because the pie in chess is, 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 ve is very small compared to, say, show business. So everybody's fighting for a piece of this small pie. I think that may, perhaps that's an explanation, or part of the explanation for the... the the uh, you know jealousy and, and backbiting in, uh, among the, in the, uh, the chess players you know in, uh, the, who do I look up to in history um hmm. Hmm, let me think who was a great man Other people might say, well, I mean, Gandhi, John Kennedy, Malcolm X. Yes, Malcolm X, I think, w w had real qualities of greatness. And I think uh, he was evolving very much before his death. He had a very, you know, narrow-minded, uh, he was locked into a very narrow-minded religion, this uh, black Muslims, you know, Elijah Muhammad group. But uh, when he broke with them, I think he was really uh, becoming much more broad-minded. Uh, uh, hopefully he would even have given up Islam, you know? Although they say he would not have, but I don't really know what he would or would not have done. But the man was brilliant, you know? But he was certainly becoming much more broad-minded than before. Because this, this Elijah Muhammad is a very, very narrow-minded group. They had no dancing. You couldn't go to see movies, you know? Ridiculous. But, uh, but he still proclaimed Islam to the end. But uh, yeah, yeah. But maybe he would have given that up. My beef, I have a lot of beefs with Islam. Uh, even though uh, I sympathize very much with the, all the injustices that have been done with, to the Arabs, you know, and the Palestinians. I cannot I have to be honest and say I don't, I don't, you know, 
gig Islam at all. You know? I think that there was a very perceptive remark on the BBC a few years ago. This BBC woman, she was talking to someone from the Middle East, you know, an Arab or Iranian or whatever. She said, this is all about Jew against uh, Islam. That's what this whole problem in the Middle East is about. Isn't it? That's what, and, and, and the Middle East guy says, no. He says, religion has nothing to do with this. He says, the, the Jews want what we've got. They want our oil. They want our land. This has nothing to do with religion. And I think that's really true. Well, Sami would not uh, <laughs> want to be a part of any religion that would not allow dancing, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a good dancer? No, I'm not. I, no, no. <laughs> you don't dance? No, no, no. Well, he, when you were, when you were uh, uh, getting your uh, titles in chess, he was getting his titles in rock dancing in Iceland as the rock mm. king. Yeah. Probably about the same time. But yeah. He, Five, six. Yeah, no, he's a great dancer, but uh, I will match his m musical knowledge any day. Yeah, but let me finish what I was saying before. I'm not condoning this. Oh, okay. I'm simply saying. But, but you are kind of condoning no, it by, I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm by your equivocal attitude. You are condoning it a I, bit. I am. I'm, Bobby, I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm you are. To form a rational view of this, yeah, yeah. not this completely impulsive, yeah. complete lack of inhibition. You know, corporalia that you use about everything. What is that? You know, Corporal what? Corporalia? Corporalia. What is that? That's just profanity. Uh, corporalia. Corporalia. Corporal. What is that? Latin? That is Latin. That is what the, the, you, you almost. Corporalaria. 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 Lalia. Lalia. Corporalaria. What does that mean in Latin? That means basically string of profanities. That is what the people with Tourette syndrome. No, but what does it mean in in if you, in English the words corporalia? Corporalia. That means is basically it is basically fecal language. Fecal language. Yeah, basically. You know, <laughs> my my my. You know you you basically. Fecal. You know what fecal is? Shit. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you, you basically, you basically, you know, give the impression now and then that you have two rats in the room, all right. Because yeah, I know, the Jews are saying that about me in many places. They do? Yes, yes, many places. That's their latest line. Is that you have Tourette's? Yes, yes, Tourette's syndrome. <laughs> I looked it up later because they kept saying it about me so much. <laughs> Named after some doctor, right? Gilles de Tourette. Yeah, yeah. They were um, upset about the way I say Jews, you know. <laughs> they were spelling it J-O-O-Z, the way he says it, you know. They didn't like it. <laughs> you should, You're a piece you should, of work. You should, you should take, you know, Simon is really worried about it. Yeah, I know. He's really getting the Everybody's heat. worried about he's it. He's getting the heat. So you should Everybody's about. worried, but, you know, I wish people were so upset about these Jewish crimes against me as they are about, worried about my answering back. You know? You are out of control, Bobby Fischer. Why don't people want to put these people who have committed these crimes against me in prison? Because you, basically what you are doing now is demanding that we put an entire nation in mm. prison. Because you insist, have done so at least ten times since we started to talk together, yeah. that all Jews are bad and all Jews are criminals. Yeah. And your statements are so meaningless. Yeah. Because you are using this this judgment about yeah. everyone yeah. who be, who belongs to you know yeah. to this nation, instead yeah. of focusing your anger at those who committed crime against you, yeah. not yeah. an entire nation. Yeah. That is unfair. It is stupid and it's ineffective. Yeah. 
And besides that, mm. no one is guilty unless, you know, unless proven guilty. Mm. And it's not enough that... Nobody one. says that about me. Oh, yes. Really? They say, you, you, I'm saying all these things uh, against the Jews, huh? It's wrong, you say. You are saying all these things against the Jews. They have been listening to them. Yeah. But, but, but they're, but they're well-founded, yeah. they're well-founded, yeah. They're well-founded, they're not well-founded. To say mm. that all Jews are bad, how, how, mm. how is that well-founded? That's just bullshit. I explained to you... Uh, you did not explain anything to me. This is just utter sorrow, unadulterated bullshit. I, I explained to you, Carrie, that um, why, if, if, the good Jews, right? Why aren't the good Jews talking against the bad Jews, the so-called good Jews out there? Oh, yes, there are. Very good people, wonderful people. Yeah, but why aren't they talking they again? Absolutely unbelievable. Why aren't the, the Jews good Jews culture? screaming against the bad Jews? Probably because they do not agree with you that they are not Salibat. Then they're not such good Jews. You know, they, they are not good Jews because they do not agree with you. That's a strange criteria. No. <laughs> You're a debater. I'm not into debating. This is not good for me. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> just because you have no you're, argument, yeah. you say you're just a deba you're debater. You know, it's yeah. not good for me. You know, no, when what, you're asked to support... No, what, what I'm saying... Say, no, no, no. What I said is... You, you, what you said doesn't make any sense. Let's yeah, just eat uh, okay, okay. think about Fischer yeah, okay, okay. which is a Which is a great invention. Yeah. You know, all these guys, like Carrie, they, 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 in college, they learn debating. Uh, debating. Yeah, they actually learn debating. <laughs> how to superficially win an argument, how to make the other guy look what, like what, a dummy. What, now what, I am not into it, that. It, it, I no, am, Bobby, you're saying that, that I am superficially winning this argument and you are profoundly losing it. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> No, no, no. Again, this is debating society <laughs> tricks. <laughs> you know? Like a joke. Yeah, John also is into debating. And all, yeah. and all these people have been to college, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. But if you're a public figure, right, you lose yeah. certain rights. Yeah. And you claim that you're a public figure. Yeah. And you are, and you want to enjoy the benefits of it, but you don't want to pay the price for it. No, no, the point is, these big companies, they're obsessive about their so-called rights, no? They've got all these rights, intellectual property rights, no? Which are endless, right? Nobody can touch their rights. Yeah, but they trample on other people's uh, intellectual property rights no, all the time. They don't. They do. No, you, you don't have intellectual property rights to your name. You don't have international property rights. Right, well, let, 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 let's move on to another subject. They, they, the U.S. government gave Learning International the right, the, the trademark of Bobby Fischer teaches chess, right? What do you say to that? Is that correct? No. But they did it. Uh, that, I find that peculiar. Well, I mean... Uh, the, the, I find you know, supposing I wrote to the U.S. government, uh, huh? and I said to the U.S. government, I want to have, I want to trademark Tiger Woods plays golf or Tiger Woods teaches golf or something, right? Uh-huh. You know, uh, what do you think of the chances of them giving, us, uh, giving it to me? <laughs> Nil, right? They say, the, who are you to suck Tiger Woods' blood? You're not, you don't even play golf. Why should you make money from I Tiger find, Woods? I find this story implausible that they granted a company look go get the get get the CD ROM Bobby Fisher teaches chess it says it right there get it it says it I'm not making it up also I saw also I saw in the newspaper that ser searching for Bobby Fisher also is trade is a trademark of, uh, of I think a Viacom or Paramount Pictures also. It is a picture that have, has nothing to do with Bobby Fischer. But they have trademarked my name. Why can't I trademark Tiger Woods' name? 
Well, I, I want to make money from Tiger Woods. I have a right to make money from him. I have a right to make millions and billions from Tiger Woods. Why can't I do that? He isn't doing so bad these days. Why can't I make billions from him? I have some good money-making ideas about making money from his name. You know? I want to make billions of dollars from Tiger Woods' name. Why can't I do that? Well, have you, have you, have you? If, you know, I don't play golf or anything, but I still, I have these money-making ideas. I want to, I want to make it, you know? Have you considered contesting those guys? I look, look. told, I, do, I don't have, if I'm going to, I'm going to spend the rest of my life in court. I've already been in a number of lawsuits with the, in, in America, and I always got laughed out of court, and I, you know, it's completely controlled. It's a joke. Hmm. I want to make money from Tiger Woods. Why can't I make money from him? The fact that I never played golf, you know, so what? I have a right to make money from him. Just like, like Viacom has a right to make money from me. No? To me, you? Huh? You're very quiet now. Now you're getting very quiet. No, but just eating. To me, you're beginning to <laughs> <coughs> sound like an unhappy, frustrated old man <coughs> who is completely obsessed with the possibility that someone has made him money by using your name. And you somehow feel that you need to get even. This is uninteresting. This is, this is not particularly undaring. What would the press say about me? If I tried to make money from Tiger Woods' name, they would say Fisher is a parasite, he is a disgusting person. Why doesn't he find a way to make money from playing chess or from doing something on his own? Why does he want to suck Tiger uh, Woods' blood? Right? That's what they would say. But nobody says that about Viacom or Paramount Pictures, right? Huh? Or, or Learning International, right? Right. Huh? I know nothing about Learning International. They're the ones who, who got the trademark for Bobby Fischer teaches chess. I think that ought to be a very easy challenge in court. Why did the government, why did the, why? In cooperation with him, but huh? were you in, at some time in cooperation with those guys? Yeah, I wrote the book. I mean, uh, the Bobby Fischer teaches chess. Mm -hmm. get, but there, there, there was never any talk about them having a trademark. I never gave them a trademark. Are you sure you, that was not the, the small letters? No, I, I, as a matter of fact, on the internet, I published my, the contract with, some, with, with, with Learning International. That's right. Not in the small print at all. When you give somebody a trademark on your name, you're giving them carte blanche to, to, to use your name forever. That is not a trademark for your name, that's a trademark for the name of a book. Yeah, but they can take that trademark and they can make a CD-ROM, they can make a, 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 anything they want with it. They can say, this is a Bobby Fisher chess clock. I mean, Bobby Fisher teaches chess chess clock. This is a Bobby Fisher teaches chess no. sweater. This is a Bobby Fisher teaches chess mm, uh, whatever. This is Bobby Fisher teaches chess chess studio. Bobby Fisher teaches chess hotel. Bobby Fisher, mm, mm, any, anything they want. I, I think, Bobby, it sounds like you just did not <coughs> that you negotiated <coughs> that you were not careful enough and you negotiated the deal with. Him. I never gave anybody the right to, to trademark my name ever. Don't you think that approximately a month would be a good time oh. for for the this random with you, Shastason? Yeah, if it can be done, the quicker the better, if it can be done quickly, yeah. It can be done quickly. If it can be, yeah. yeah. But what, what, because, of the, because of the influence yeah. that the Jewish community has on the media, yeah, yeah, yeah. lay low with your anti Jewish comment until we are done with this, all right? I I, I, no, no, this I can't promise, no. I'm not asking you to promise. I'm just telling you, you do. Uh oh, <laughs> I can't, can't you're, promise. You, you, you have been, you know, because yeah. otherwise I will have to resort to physical violence. You will not. <laughs>
<laughs> no, no, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, I understand, be, but uh, can otherwise I can't. we'll not be able to cut a deal on this. Yeah. With with uh, with the television station. Yeah. The international one. Maybe you have to find some uh, some Arab network or something. <laughs> 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 so he had not lost his sense of humor, that's for sure. But how much money will he get? Uh, you, you need to, we need to, you know. No, I'm serious, I don't think you can, you can count on any of these uh, type, you know, Western networks for money, no. I'm not counting on them for money, I'm counting on them for distribution. Oh, uh, yeah. There, there are, there are, you know, the value in all of this lies in so many places. Yeah, yeah. It lies in the direct monetary value of what you, what you get out of it, and then it lies in the, in the sort of intangible value that lies in the distribution, because of the next match that you want to play. I've never understood these things, you know, precisely, you know, very well, you know. I just understand these things very generally, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, but it is, it's, when, when you're starting this, yeah, yeah. it's extraordinarily more important than exactly the same amount of money you would get for the first match, it's yeah, the exposure yeah. that the match is going to get, yeah, yeah. because that creates value for the next match. Well, the, it's very important to promote this game. I think this yeah. game is very exciting. It will catch on. If the interest in the interest in it, it will it catch on. As, as soon as <coughs> once they see it, you know. As soon as you have played these two games, yeah, yeah, yeah. These two, these two matches, the Shastasun and then the Karpov or Kasparov, mm. this will catch on like like wildfire. No, I think it'll catch on like wildfire right away. Yeah. As soon as people start to see yeah. these the, yeah. the the games, how exciting this new chess yeah. is, and as I say, you have a diagram at the at, uh, and in, in, in the newspaper <coughs> before every game. Yeah. The, you know, the starting position. Yeah. I mean, you start, uh, just, just the diagram is so exciting, no? Yeah. Just it, to it. start thinking about the game and, and, and even before it begins, right? Christian, mind you, mind you. Well, you, ha you don't have that at all in the old chess, this right? Is the, this it's is absolute, who gives a damn about the old starting position, right? It's so, it's so yeah, old hat, it's so this boring, is, right? This is also an equalizer, remember? Yeah. This is an equalizer. This is going to make people much, much more even. When yeah, yeah, it. right. I think I think we should call this a day. In in the early afternoon tomorrow, yeah. we will meet with Chesterson. I went to Bobby and the day we came, uh, an incident happens. I was regarding food, uh, which I got just from Bobby. I wasn't there. But he said that the guard was sort of walking him because he walked by more than once. And he didn't give him any egg. And he said when he walked it a second or third time by the door, could I have another egg? Uh, and he sort of smiled, so. Just to clarify that, uh, if he, Bobby was, <coughs> Bobby was being sarcastic. Normally you're supposed to get an egg as part of your breakfast in of a prison course, and yes. you didn't get it and then he, to, 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 to point out how unhappy he was, he said, can I get an another egg? egg? Yes, that's it. So, so he was something revoking him. So, Poppy is a man of temper, as I, you probably all know. So he understood that he put his hand out a, a little. He was in his cellar that I understood, and grabbed in the breast and shirt of the, of the prisoner guard, and the sh when he went back, he turned his shirt. And about a few moments later, it came, uh, he said 14 or 15 guards, a whole army, and took him and, and pushed him down and dragged him to the next cellar, which 
was a solitary room with no windows or anything. And he was down there in the floor with plenty of people, guards holding him. And then uh, came some person, older person, who said that he didn't know, probably the boss of those uh, prison guards. And he said, you're a prisoner here, as you do, like you're told, and, and uh, a few other things or something. And Bobby said, yes, 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 okay, okay. And somehow his arms got loose, and he smacks him in the face. And he said, I probably break his, broke his nose, I don't know, but I heard he went to the, to the hospital. That is just what he said, and I hope I'm not... I hope I wasn't told this in Capitalist because otherwise I would have kept it to myself. But I always think it's good to be honest and told what I think. I don't have to beat around the bush, I just tell you how it goes. Oh, well, no, no, that wasn't really the egg. It was just I was getting angry, you know, that yeah. was the, the first incident. I, mean, yes. yeah. Yeah. I asked for some. I, I woke egg. up on the wrong side of the bed, you know? Yes, that's right. So, so then I that's... said, I want two eggs, uh, which yes. I normally was shouting at them, you know? Yes. And then, and then, uh, well, there was some commotion, and somehow I didn't get any egg, you know? Yeah, right, yeah. And they were walking down, so I was, and then I grabbed one through the bars, I grabbed a guard. Yes. And I pulled him up against the door, you know? Yeah. And then he bumped into the door, and then as he's falling back, yeah. My hand is in his pocket, shirt, yeah. so his shirt rips down, you know? Okay, yeah. Then he yes, got yes, upset yes. about his shirt. Yes. And then, and then they came into my cell, a whole lot, like 10, 15 guards, yes. took me to... to a closed room. Or to a, um, an isolation room, yeah. very nearby, carried me into an isolation room. So, uh, then they were holding me down, and then, like this little Japanese, old little Japanese guy yeah. says, he says, "You are our prisoner. You will do everything we tell you. Do you understand that? Yeah. You will never disobey us. Do you understand that?" Yeah. I say, "Yeah." Then they, then they all let go. Then I punched the, <laughs> the guard <laughs> in the face, you know, very yeah. hard. Yeah. And then they were very vicious. They they yeah. put my hands behind my back yeah. in right. some kind of arm cuff, not just yes. a handcuff. No, the arm very painful to, to hang you up, oh, very high up, yeah? and and like double, double, and yeah. one of them was very tight. tight. Two of them were tight here, and they were cutting the circulation oh. for about an hour and a half. Blood, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh Jesus Christ! And then that, after about an hour and a half, they loosened it a little bit. Up. Yeah, but they took it off after about two hours. It just, yeah. just tortured me yeah, for, yeah. for no reason, you know, because they were they had left the cell, yeah. and they could have taken off these arm cuffs yeah, through the cuffs. window. They have like yeah. a hole there, you know. Yeah, right. Uh, yes. Oh. At the oven. Oh. Hello, my friend. Hi. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. Pleasure yes. to see you. Yes. <laughs> my friend. Oh, my friend. Last we free, my friend here. <laughs> Come. May I give me a uh, give me a hack here a little bit? Yeah. <laughs> After all these years. Wait, my hat. Wait, my hat. Oh, there's your hat. Okay, get it. Okay, here you go. Okay, my friend. Oh, Give me a hack. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a little hack. <laughs> okay, brother. Nice to see you. <laughs> After all this time. Oh, jeez. Maybe you go to this car oh, here. You put it probably in the back here. This one here. Okay, last we are here. <laughs> Much of the battle <laughs> was won. Oh, oh my yes. friend. <laughs> nice to see you. Oh my friend. Okay. 
Yeah, I think we sit down here. That's pretty from the and the embassy and. Okay. Thank you, sir. To take the yeah, colleague. Yeah. <laughs> you have a policy for okay. your yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. chief inspector in, okay. in yeah. station, she was to be in. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he may first the mayor pensionister. Okay. <laughs> we we skal lige have hans bagage, så det kommer lige om lidt, så er vi klar, yeah. så kan I bare køre. Ja, det er der. Det er fint. Tak. I believe you have fun. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know. Yeah. You know? Yes, I know. People don't know how long my memory is. I remember an interview Sammy Davis Jr. gave many, many, many years ago. Yes. I think it was in the National Enquirer. It was like on the front page of the National Enquirer. You know what yeah. he said? Yeah. No. America stinks. He said that? Yeah. yeah. He said, I'm getting out of this damn country. He's just talking about, you yes. know, all the crime and everything. Yeah, yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, Sammy Davis Jr. was one of the greatest entertainers who ever lived, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, he was He was great yeah, dancer, yeah, yeah. he was great singer. Yeah. He, 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 he was fantastic. He was one of the greatest. You he know. was a wonderful man. Yes, he was a wonderful man. We are, we are and he imitated, mimicked, singer, yeah, that's dancer, right, that's right, yeah. talk show host, actor. Yeah, actor, everything. Everything, was, oh yeah, yeah. He was so much talented, yeah, I never yeah, seen yeah, anyone yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah, good singer too, you know. Very good, very good. I wish I got my toes where he had his heels. You know? He was so crazy. You know? Yeah, he was. I liked him. Yeah. yeah, I liked him too. Awful lot. I, some guy was telling a very nasty joke about him in Las Vegas. Some Jew. Yeah. He says. You think he, you, you've got problems? He says, Sammy Davis Jr. Yeah. He says. Uh, He says he's black. Yeah. He's got one eye. He's Jewish. And he's a midget. He did. He said that. You know, he said that David Fry, that Jewish comedian. <laughs> he's a midget and he's black with one eye and he's Jewish. And he's Jewish. <laughs> oh, Jesus no, but I, I really like Sandy. I like him too, awful lot. Oh, I, I like really his song. It. You know what his song was? His big hit? You know what? It's my motto. You know, you know what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Frank Sinatra, right? Frank Sinatra my way, right? My way, and Gene Martin. Right, but but but, yeah, but, but, but I, I prefer Sammy Davis' Junior song yes, better. Right, you know what his yes. you know what his signature what? song was? No, what was that? I, I, I don't remember. Frank Sinatra's. Huh. No. Frank Sinatra sang my way, right? Everybody yes, knows right. that song. But yes, Sammy Davis' right. Junior song was better. <laughs> Sammy Davis' Junior song was "I Gotta Be Me." Huh? I gotta be me, I gotta be free, to do what I die, I gotta be me. I, I can't be right for somebody else if I'm not right for me. Okay. Remember that song? I think that's better than my way. Yes, I haven't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I might have it at home. I, I might. If I don't, you I might get it buy it. Somewhere yes, yes pretty sure. Uh, some of the uh, Dean Martin uh, songs are stuff, really yeah. Yeah, good stuff. I really liked him yeah, as well. Yeah. You know, he was the he Rat was, Pack. The Rat yeah, pack. Rat Pack. Yes, that's right. The, when the moon hits you, the ride like a bigger piece of pilot smoke. When the sun beaten to shine, when you had too much wine, that's smoke. Jingling, 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 Isabella. But you sing ding ling ling ba ba da da di ba ba bi. Then he said, when you walk down the street with the uh, yeah, when you walk down the street with, with a smile on your face, with a smile on your face. Yeah. Your face. Si signore, si back signore. in old Napoli. Yeah, back, that's back what in the old Napoli. Amore, so that's Samore. No, that's what when they call you sing, just to sing better. And very, when you walk down the street like a 
When you walk down the street like a something. When you walk down the street like a When you walk down the street like a you see you back in old Napoli, that's a morning. Excuse me, yeah, that's one. Yeah, Excuse I have me, to, but you see, back, back in see, old back Napoli, to old Napoli, that's the morning. That's the morning. Oh, will you rise like a big piece of pie? That's the morning. When the moon hits your eyes, like, hit your pizza eyes. Pizza like a big piece of pie, that's the morning. When the sun starts to shine, when you had too much wine, that's the morning. Ding a ling, ding a ling a ling. It's Isabella. Yeah, that's a many good songs with yeah. Dean Martin, but. <coughs> I remember him, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. You yes, remember those Jerry movies? Lewis. Yeah, that was yes, were good they, movies. Good movies. They, they were, were funny movies. Yes, great but they, movies. But, yeah. but but Dean Martin couldn't take uh, Jerry Lewis because Jerry Lewis was like trying to hog the attention and the sh and the movies. Yeah, you right. know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, remember? yeah, that's right. I remember that. That was really fantastic. I think they had a falling out too, because Lewis, Jerry Lewis is Jewish and Dean Martin is Italian, you know? Yeah, right, that's right, that's right. You know? Yeah, that's right. But they were they were a great team, those They were guys. a funny they, team, yeah, funny yeah. Team, you know? And it's Rat Pack, I, I really enjoy that. Those they made a lot of movies. Yes. Remember, they made about five or six movies, yes. uh, many movies. Yeah, Are you, everybody, cool. all of us kids, were always waiting for their next movie. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Back in the 50s. That's right, in the 50s, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed them. Because they were all good singers, and they were, uh, they were uh, funny, you know. Who else yeah. was in the Rat Pack? Dean Martin, yeah, that Jerry was, uh, Lewis. Wasn't it uh, Junior? Wasn't it Tony Bennett? Was it was, was Tony Bennett or uh, no, Joe, no, Joe, no. Bishop, Joe Bishop? Joe Bishop. Joe Bishop. He was and that Kennedy guy. Yes. also, the Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. There was the, a Kennedy. Yes, that's right. His name. The name Peter was Lofford. Peter Lofford. Peter Lofford. Yeah. Peter Lofford. Peter yeah. Lofford. He was and married maybe Ronald to Ronald Reagan. I don't know. Maybe he was a part of it for yeah? a while. I'm not sure. Yeah. Ah. Peter Lafford, he was uh, one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he was acting in Lassie, you know, the dog Lassie. Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah. That's a little dog, you know. Collier, you know, as a little boy, he started there, you know. And, and he was you know, Frank Sinatra was not all bad, you know? No, no, no. no, he, no, had no. A, he gave a lot of money to a lot of people. Yes. He would read in the newspaper somebody had an accident or somebody had cancer. Or That's right. He was he really would just helpful. Send them person. A, yeah. Ten thousand dollars. That's Boom. right. It was very, very you know? helpful. People yes. People never heard of. Him. That's just right. Ten thousand dollars. That's right. It was not for publicity or anything. That's right. He was a kind, a kind man. You know. Yeah. 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 It's very. If somebody really had it bad, you know, he. That's true. And he's but he had very bad, bad publicity yes. for many years because yeah. he's Italian. Yes. And they said he was. Was in, in the uh, mafia. Yeah, that yeah, the yeah, mafia or, or, controlled or, or, him yeah. or whatever. That's right. There's something and, like and, that. And and he had a, a arrest warrant in New Jersey. He could never go to the state right. of New Jersey because there was an arrest warrant for him yeah. because oh, he, he did it? not testify uh, about some mafia thing. Okay. I didn't so he had very bad. Everything was. Uh, Frank Sinatra, Italian, Mafia, Mafia, Mafia. Oh, interesting. Then, hmm. he married a Jewish woman. Oh, her name was Marx. Okay. End of all this yeah. bad publicity till he died. Yeah, okay. Overnight. Yeah, overnight. They turned it off. Matilda, no? Matilda, she take me money and run Venezuela. Everybody, Matilda, Matilda, she take Matilda, she take me money and run Venezuela. Oh, now all my money is spent in vain. <laughs> all my money is spent in vain, yes. I don't know. Matilda, she take me money and run Venezuela. Like that song, We Are the World. I was watching the video in the prison. Oh, what, what, what film was that? What? No, the, the song, We Are the World. By, you know, that We're famous the world. song about. We got the whole. No, 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 no. We, 
We are the world. We are the children. Yeah, we are, we the, are the ones who make a brighter yeah, day. That's so right. let's start giving. Yeah, that's right. That everybody's singing oh, that. Yes, they that's had, fantastic. Yes. They had. So you can. They had. Ray Charles, Bob yeah. Dylan, yes. uh, Bruce oh, Springsteen, yes. uh, everybody. That everybody about, was that, alive, you know, yeah, of the best. Was, yeah. Yes, I, I remember that one. Song you like, like that funny, familiar, forgotten feelings? You know that one? By Tom Jones? Yeah, funny, familiar, forgotten feelings keep walking all over my mind. Sex bombs, you know, sex bombs. I must go on, be strong, right. though millions of teardrops may fall before those funny, familiar, forgotten feelings stop walking all over my mind. One. Then and he had the green, 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 green of home. Of home. And then the, uh, the old yeah. hometown looks the same. Hey, hey. As I step hey, down hey, from, from the train. Hey, hey. And there to greet me is my mama and my daddy. Mama. Down the road I look and there runs Mary. Hair of gold and lips like cherries. It's good to touch. The green, green grass of home. Oh, yeah, 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 thank you. Yeah. They don't want people to get the picture. Yeah. So they shut up talking about, don't you me. You understand? Yep. In other words, they don't say Michael Jackson is a very bad person and he should be convicted of this uh, child molestation because he said, don't Jew me in a song. They're too smart now. No. now. Before they made a big story out of it, but now they're at a different stage. Now they're yeah. really going after him yeah. and they don't want people to get the picture, yeah. to see the real motivation. Right. 
you know? And then I explained about all the plastic surgery. Yeah. Uh, I explained how he is not guilty for this because he's mentally and emotionally ill. Yeah. The doctors had no right to do this to him. The doctors had no right to do this to him, even if he wanted it, because he's mentally and emotionally ill. If you come to me and say, Bobby, push me out the window, I'll give you $1,000, I'm not going to do it. Oh. I'll try to tell you to get some help, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's what they had to tell Michael Jackson. Right. But there was a stinking American movie about the Gulf War I with George Clooney. And then one of the soldiers makes a speech in there condemning Michael Jackson for the surgery. He did it to himself. Yes, Gulf War One. I. I don't know the name of the movie, but it was about Gulf War One starring George Clooney. So, you know, this is a very sad case, Michael Jackson. Yeah. Because I think he's a very nice person. This is so damn commonplace in America. Yeah. This is happening a thousand times tonight while we're talking in Hollywood. Right. They call these guys the chicken hawks. Yeah. You know? Chicken hawks. Chicken hawks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Class. You know? <laughs> They go for young kids, you know? Yeah. We were thinking, Bobby, if you could go and take a short interview before we eat. Just uh, okay, 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 okay. Is that okay? Do you need maybe more light? Maybe. Do we have any more lights? Okay, okay. You, okay. Mean, you have a napkin, a napkin? Yeah. A napkin, yeah. A napkin? Do you think that the U.S. government will keep coming after you, or will they give up now that you have become an Icelandic citizen? Yeah, that, that's the question now, no? And what do you think? I'm not sure, but if I know the Jews in the U.S., they may lay off for a while, and then they like sneak attacks. They may lay off until things die down, and then they may come at me with some attack I don't expect, you know? Or, or they, may, they may continue now, because Bush is crazy, obviously, and the Jews behind him. I really don't know, you know? Might let you go. No, they will not let me go. I mean, they may... No, they won't let me go. They will... The, the, the most they might do is stop now, because it's already gotten some publicity, you know, bad publicity for them. But at a, at a future time, they will try something. I don't know what it will be. Could be anything, you know. There are a lot of ways to, 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 to finish somebody. By the way, does it, does it sort of bring any change to your state of mind of, that you have now become an Icelander instead of American? Which you have well, been I'm life. still an American, they say, the Americans, so I guess, are you allowed to have dual citizenship? Yes, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, but no, I'm very ha happy to be an Icelander because, um, first of all, I've had all this trouble with America all these years, right? But secondly, it's dangerous to be an American now. Whenever I checked into a hotel, you know, showed my American passport, I'm always wondering, maybe these people here are connected to some Muslims, and they're going to say, he's an American here, and I'll get killed or kidnapped or something, because they may think I'm against the uh, Muslim people or uh, whatever, you know? It's dangerous to be an American now. Huh? It's dangerous to check into a hotel and just say I'm an American. Because you're of better off saying you're an Icelander. Yeah, much better. <laughs> much better. What, what, what are your plans? Let's say for the next months or even 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 years. Are, are, are you planning to reside in Iceland or, or are you planning to move in somewhere else or move around? Or move? Uh, I'm, well, I, I, spend, I hope to spend time in Iceland, but I, I, I like to move around. I, I, I wouldn't, you know, spend all year in Iceland, I don't think. Yeah. That's a free man. 
Yeah. There is a strange, or not a strange maybe, that, but as a grandmaster in Iceland, yeah, yeah. according to law, yeah. you are entitled to a salary. <laughs> and every Icelandic grandmaster in chess, they are paying, they have been paid salaries. Provided that uh, you do some teaching in chess, oh, no, or no, even no, possibly uh, play for Iceland. And then no, I hate chess very much. No, I, I, I don't need the money. No, I don't need okay. it. I'll, I'll wait, I'll skip it. <laughs> so you're not... Planning? I hate chess, I hate chess, really. You hate chess? Yeah. So you're not planning on claiming the grandmaster salary? And no, 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 no. Why do you hate chess, being the probably and possibly the best chess player ever? How does, how, how because does I, it? I know what chess is all about. Yeah. It's all about memorization, it's all about prearrangement. But creativity, creativity. Yeah, creativity is, is, is lower down on the list. I mean, you, you became world champion on creativity. Well, first of all, this is a long time ago when I played the Spassky the first match. Yeah. And even the second match is already some time ago, 15 years ago, almost 13 years ago. And chess, just the last few years, has changed dramatically with all of this computer stuff. But really, if you analyze chess objectively, very objectively, it's been a lousy game. But going back even to the time of Morphy, there was a lot of book. But there still is a place for, for, for talent, for creativity. It isn't all prearrangement, all theory, all... No, not all, of course, not all, I agree. But why do you want to get involved with something that is mainly wrote and prearrangement, you know. Obviously it's not all, you know, that, but the, the, the creativity is not, is, is like maybe number three on the list. The first okay. prearrangement, and the memorization, and then comes creativity. Uh, opposed to Fischer Rando, yeah. then you sort of put creativity first. Right, right, right. Now, th let me explain something about Fischer Random. I, I've never made any claims that this is the greatest thing, you know, since uh, puffed weed or whatever, you know what I mean? I never made any claim saying that this is perfect. Or what I say is, it's much better than the old chess. Now, now, for example, let's say you could have a million chess-like games, right? Maybe a million of them, or 10 million would be better than Fisher Random. But the point about Fisher Random is, it's basically the same as the old chess, except you get rid of the theory, and it's very easy to remember the, the rules. That's my point. You see? Now, I was just looking at a book Sammy gave me, you know, this book about Capablanca. Yes. Capablanca had a very interesting game that he proposed. I think it was 10 by 10 or something. And uh, it had two kings and extra pieces, and you can mate, you win the game by mating either of your opponent's kings. And it looked like a very creative game, and it may be much better than Fisher Random, but it looked very intimidating, even for me, right? Yeah. The top chess player. It looked very intimidating. All these extra pieces, huge board, two kings. If it intimidates me, I think it will intimidate the average person much more. So, th th there are a lot of games that you can come up with that have practical defects, not, not creative defects, but just defects in terms of discouraging people to learn them. You see, that's my point about Fisher Random. You can learn Fisher Random in five, 10 seconds practically. So there is... Uh, no impediment. You have the same pieces, the same board. All you have to do is get an electronic shuffler, and in one second you have a position. Uh, but of course, you could create more creative games than, than, than Fisher Random. Maybe, you know, an extra piece or a bigger board and all kind of things. But uh, my idea, people think I'm anti chess. No, I'm not anti chess. I'm pro chess. I'm trying to keep it alive. It's very... It's just the reverse. 
It's very I, I'm not coming up with anything right. uh, radical at all. I asked two Icelandic grandmasters the other day yeah. who was the best chess player ever yeah, yeah. in the history of chess. Yeah, yeah. And they both said they contemplated it. <clears throat> and I asked them, objectively speaking, and they both said Bobby, Bobby Fischer yeah. is the best player yeah. ever. Do you agree with that, Mr. Ah. I want to get back to Fisher Random. You don't want to answer this one? Uh, Are you the best player ever that ever was? Oh, well, I am obviously, I think so, right? Yeah. I mean, during the match, uh, you, you uh, beat Timon of 7 to 0. You beat uh, Larsen 6 to 0. Nobody but I, has but, ever no, but first of all, that. you have to understand something about chess. Of course. Uh, I'm better than Morphy. Why am I better than Morphy? I know, I don't say I have more talent than him, I just know much more theory, right? If he came back today and he could not open a book, let's say, right? He, he would do badly against, uh, even against masters, maybe. That has nothing to do with his talent, though, right? So when you say, I'm better than, so it doesn't mean anything because of all this theory in chess. But now, if you were to say, am I the most talented player, that's something else. Are you the are most you? talented player? Well, again, I think so. But maybe, you know, that's just my opinion. You know, Morphy was fantastic, Capablanca was fantastic. What about later? World champions, Kasparov? Uh, but, as I said, I don't like to delve too much into the old chess. Right. Because I hate it so much. I feel by delving into it, I'm, I'm promoting it in some way. But then, I don't want to promote this goddamn game. But the, my only interest in the old chess, I have one interest, only one interest, to expose the prearrangement. People are living in a dream world. But don't you think do it's not, paradoxical coming from the best player that ever was and now saying it is the most. Uh, the life is world. like that, no? Yeah. Life there is, is there's one question that I've, that I've always wanted to ask you, given the opportunity. It's not really paradoxical. Okay. Chess is, a, is basically a search for truth, right? So I'm searching for the truth. The truth is chess is no good anymore. Okay. So that's an honest on the table. Huh? On the it, table. Yeah. On? on the table, when you're playing the chess. You know. Chess is no good, and it hasn't been a good game objectively for 150 years, since all this theory. It was a good game maybe 200 years ago, in the time of, um, of, um, you know, who's that guy who, did, uh, who, learned, who developed the pawns uh, theory, what's his name, uh, the Frenchman. So you're saying that already when you became world champion, that already then, by then, it was a bad game. Yes, yes. Yes, it was a bad game, but I just, but, but on the other on the other hand, it wasn't as bad as today. No comparison, but it was a bad game. But at the time, I was uh, fired with ambition because to, to win, and I did not. I was willing to uh, overcome all of these uh, idiotic obstacles in the way of a uh, that block a talented person from uh, winning. But now, you see. Well, what, as, the, as you get older, right? What do they say? Uh, you have to get. Um, what is the point? As you get older, you. If you don't get better, you have to get smarter. No. Yeah. yeah. I'm much smarter now than I was then. You yeah. know. Much much smarter. Now I. I, I don't want to. Uh, do things the hard way. Why do things the hard way when there's an easier, better way? Did you gradually, uh, you know, were you, you, you were quoted as a young man saying... The old chess oh. is you're banging your head against the wall with this theory that you are, you know, you were trying to find some little improvement on move, you know, 18 or yeah. 20. It's ridiculous. It gets harder and harder and harder. You need more and more computers. You need more and more people working for you. You, you know, and less so and what? less talent. Yeah, and less and less. Uh, the agents. 
Yeah, you know, it's Enjoyment. ridiculous. Enjoyment, everything. Why? Why? Did you gradually start to hate chess or did it come suddenly? Oh, that's a, that's a good question again. Did I gradually start? I think it, it came gradually, but then at a certain point, I mean, I was hating it, but I didn't know it, you know what I mean? Because I was still trying to make it work, you know? But then now I realize I, I was gradually hating it, you know, all along. There's one question that I've always wanted to ask. Yeah, yeah. You basically stopped playing competitive chess already in 1972. Yeah, yeah. Well, for 20 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you regret stopping? Do you regret not having defended your title against Anatoly Karpov in 1972? No, 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 no. No regrets. That I offered perfectly fair conditions. He refused to play me. Yeah. My conditions were absolutely fair. It's all lies. Yeah. I, for example, Capablanca played Alakine, right? Yeah. In what it was 19, what, 27? Around there, 28? I don't know. Okay. That match was the first player to win six games, right? Right? Yes. If the match was tied five to five, Capablanca would retain the title. Yeah. So, 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 Alakin would have had to win the match by at least uh, six to four, right? Yeah. Two, two. But nobody ever has complained about that match. They all say that was a great match and it was a fair match. My conditions were much fairer for the challenger. He had to be beaten nine times to lose his chance to become a world yeah. champion in the match. Yeah. Absolutely fair conditions. Ridiculously fair conditions. But almost everyone is sure that even under the conditions that you refuse to play, you have, would have won him. Are yeah. no, have you never felt regret not defending your title against him? Well, Apart from the conditions, I mean, uh, irrespective of I, I say, I, I don't like the way you put it. He refused to play me. I'm the I champion. Know. Yeah, I know. You know? Thing was absurd. Yeah, it's only one void. It was the, it, it fell on one void, you know. Well, no, no, no. First of all, I talked to Fred Kramer yes. later. Yeah. He told me I won this vote in Amsterdam. Yeah. Okay. Yes, but that because if you will recall, they never published the breakdown of the vote. Okay. <laughs> they never said how each country voted on the my conditions. And he says, I won the vote, they just said I lost it. I thought uh, you lost it by one. Somebody That's what the vote. press says, yes. Press said, yeah. But he said it's not true because they never published how every country voted. He says, I actually won the vote. They're just lying. Well, let's get back to this prearrangement, okay? If I had written my book about Karpov and Kasparov as I had intended before the Jews stole all my files, you would understand what a rotten game chess is if you realize the extent of the prearrangement. You wouldn't be you wouldn't be have any regrets about what you know throwing out the old game yourself. Politics, the rotten politics. The prearrangement is on, it's almost all prearranged now at the high, higher level. It's all prearranged. I am not exaggerating this. This first Karpov Kasparov uh, match was prearranged move by move. Every move of every game. There's no question about this. All through the match. Yes, and I believe all of the Karpov Kasparov matches were prearranged move by move. Every move of every game. But there's no question the first match was. I studied that match intently. I still intend to write a book about it, even though the Dirty Jews stole all my files. I had many, many, I had several boxes full of books on it. Yeah. I had every game annotated about 18 different ways. I had about, uh, about eight or nine books on the match, and then I had about 10 uh, magazines yeah, that had, had every game annotated also. So I maybe see I had a, about eight. I had every game 
annotated from 18, fully annotated from 18 different sources. Plus I had a lot of other books, supplementary books, uh, regarding the match. All this has been stolen by the filthy Jews at Beacons, and also when my mother died, they stole the, the books I had with her. We're talking about many dozens of books. So you think the it's Jews, possible to prove that the match was prearranged? Yes, yes, it's, it's obviously prearranged, no question. Look, unless you think I'm crazy, which I'm not, the Jews say I'm crazy, I'm not, I'm perfectly sane. Anybody can analyze my voice and you will see I'm telling the truth. Now ask the Jew bastard Kasparov or ask Karpov, is their match prearranged? Ask it live in the same conditions as this. You will, you will see they are lying. You will see they are lying. Any, any, any half-assed expert will be able to tell you they're lying with any kind of, even without a voice lie detector, but especially with a voice lie detector, you know? They are lying. It's obviously prearranged the first match. So plain. These people are crooks on a grand scale. hard to prove at all. I mean, I mean, it's not really, no. It's so obvious. No, I mean, you cannot prove it necessarily having a recording of Karpov and Kasparov talking, but like that. But, but, but you, you can prove it just the way you can prove in a trial that something happened without, without the guy, without having a recording somewhere of his confession privately or whatever, you know. No, no question. No, it's obvious as hell. Obvious as hell. Uh, to a totally different thing. Yeah, yeah. Bobby. What about religion? Have you kept your faith? Is there a God somewhere? I'm not into religion at all right now, no. Not at all? No, no. I think all the holy books are bunk. Mm. But you think, that, is there a God somewhere, do you think? Well, I think the term God is a nonsense word, like Rajneesh says, the Indian guru. I think this is true. God is a nonsense word because, I mean, it doesn't have any one definition, first of all, right? Everybody has a different definition of what it means. But uh, uh, we don't know what's in the universe, no? Uh, is there a higher power? The, yeah, we don't know. We don't know. I don't know. Maybe there is a. There may be more advanced people, more advanced beings, you know, yeah. and they may communicate with us. They may. I don't know. Or we, you know, it's all very mysterious. But I don't believe any of these holy books. Let's put it that way. I think these books. I've completely outgrown them. They are all childish nonsense. Every so-called holy book is childish nonsense. Yes. 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 I've studied the Bible. I know the Bible quite well. I've also looked over some other holy, so-called holy books. Yes. You know, there's so many so-called holy books. There's the Book of Moroni. There's the Koran. I, I've looked through these. They're all rubbish. Did you? Were you a religious man at any point in time? Did you believe in God? Well, I was following it for a while. Yeah. Not anymore. No, no. It's a, it's a very simplistic, you know. Too simplistic. I, I really believe they, this did begin in, in, in June. At first I thought maybe it began even a few days before or even the day they had me kidnapped, arrested me. But I, I think it probably did begin in June uh, 2004. Because I was going with Miyoko, we go to co tea, coffee shops for tea, you know? 
And I started to notice uh, some strange people, old, old guys, sitting around just endlessly. They had like a briefcase, they seemed well dressed, doing nothing when I was there. And this happened more than once. It didn't just happen once. You know, once you, you, know, you let it go. But it was happening continuously starting around early June. And uh, I started to wonder, well, maybe I thought these were either journalists or I didn't know, you know, some kind of secret police or whatever. I didn't know what the hell was going on. But you have to live your life, right? So you I just, you know, you just you have to ignore these things, right? This? Oh, yeah, yeah, this one, okay. Yeah. The only thing they could possibly be talking about when they say, uh, my passport is revoked. I'm sorry. Oh, oh. The only thing they possibly could be talking about, I think, is this December 11th, 2003 letter from uh, Theodore Allegra. He's the Consul of the United States of America in, in, uh, of the U.S. Embassy in Manila, the Philippines. Now this letter I was given uh, after I was arrested. The next day, I had never heard of it. I ne and I never seen the letter, never heard anything about it, ever. Um, okay, so th this, uh, th th I think, this, is, this, I suppose, would be their excuse for uh, arresting me. But this letter is totally absurd. Totally absurd. Uh, first of all, it has no original signature, just a photocopy. You see? That is not, this is, I was presented a photocopy of this letter. Yeah? It has no address to me. It just has... Embassy of the United States of America on it. No address to me. And it has um, no, came with no envelope, no postmark, nothing. We just presented to me. Well, first, somebody, they forced me, physically forced me to the guards. They came into my cell, dragged me to meet this uh, guy called Peter, who supposedly is from the U.S. Embassy. He, he showed it to me from at a distance. He didn't give it to me. And then, and then a few minutes later, the guards gave me this letter. So uh, this all happened on uh, J July 14, 2004, the day after I'm arrested. I'm a prisoner already, right? And they give me this letter uh, and um, say it has no, sign no original signature, has no address to me, and it has no uh, envelope, no postmark, uh, nothing. It's, uh, what you're saying is that this is not, in your opinion, a, 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 a photocopy of a signed original? Uh, in my opinion, um, this letter was not written when they say it was written. And uh, there may not even be an original period. I think it's entirely possible they just, they asked Allegra, to sign the letter, you know, and uh, and he refused because you know, they wanted him to predate it back to the, you know, December 11, 2003. Uh, I think all of this, the decision to arrest me and everything came much, much later. Uh, I think in June or July even of 2004. So there was no revoc revocation, there was nothing until then. You see, and there was no no attempt made to to you know uh, get this letter from uh, December 11th, uh, supposed letter from December 11th, yeah. to you at all. No, no, absolutely not. No, and 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 all, and all of the indications are that there was no revocation on December 11th because I was traveling all over the world for many months after this. I mean, what were you, all, so this what, entire arrest is just based on lies by, by the U.S. government. And there's some letters that I got later, much later, that were sent by the U.S. government to, um, 
to the Japanese Ministry of Justice. I got copies of those letters. But all of this, I believe, started in June or July. The decision to, to, to uh, try and get me arrested by the U.S. government started in June or July. I think this is quite clear. But, but why would they date it backwards, the letter, if... if, if, if they... Because it ties in with this arrest. Uh, this, uh, this says, I, when I entered April 15th, <clears throat> 2004, I entered, my passport was not valid. You see? They wanted to say, not only isn't your passport valid, but you were traveling on a revoked passport. You know, sin of sins, right? We, but, you know, but first place it was not revoked. Second place I wasn't traveling on a revoked passport. You know? And, I mean, were, were, you, were you hard to get hold of? I mean, oh, yeah, that's another good, that's a good question. Uh, they, the, later on I got these letters from the U.S. Uh, government to, to the Japanese Ministry of Justice and, and, the, and the U.S. government simply lied to, um, to uh, the Ministry of Justice about that. All oh, right, right, thank you. And this, this, let's see. Okay, I'll put this here. This is a mess here. This is, oh my God. Okay, here. Later on, in about August, I, yeah, sometime in August, I got letters from photocopies of letters that the U.S. Uh, embassy in in Japan, in, 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 in Tokyo, had written to the Ministry of Justice. There are two letters. Okay. Uh, the first letter was allegedly written June 8, 2004, to the Director General, Immigration Bureau, Ministry of Justice, Tokyo, Japan. The second letter was allegedly written August 11th, 2004. See, this is so. The first letter was written before I was uh, arrested. Actually, it was kidnapped by the Japanese government. The second letter was uh, uh, written after, right, August 11th, 2004. But in the August 11th letter, 2004. This, see, this August 11th letter, uh, 2004, for the Embassy of the United States of America to the Director General Immigration Bureau Ministry of Justice. Uh, Dear Director General, I am writing in response to the inquiries made to us on August 10th regarding the U.S. government's revocation of the U.S. passport issued to Robert James Fisher. Okay? So they're, they're, they're writing to the Japanese government. Uh, I guess the Japanese government has some questions for them. But here they just tell a flat out lie it says, Mr. Fisher's passport was properly revoked on November 21st, 2003. Uh, yeah, actually, they're, they're claiming that it was revoked on December, November 21st, 2003, and then I was notified on December 11th, 2003. I guess that's what they're claiming, okay? Uh, Mr. Fisher's passport was properly revoked on November 21st, 2003, prior to his April 15th entry into Japan. However, we were unable to properly advise him of the revocation until he was located in Japan on July 14th, 2004. That's the day after I'm arrested, see? I mean, you know, kidnapped, arrested. But later on, um, this was, I think, October, about October 15th, 2004, they had an alleged passport hearing in the prison where I was, which I did not attend because I had written them telling them before I would attend such a, a passport hearing, I had to be freed from my uh, illegal detention, I had to get back my dis uh, destroyed passport, and I had to get a, issued a new passport. You see, the idea would be to set a level playing field. Okay, but they, they refused and they went ahead with the, the, this hearing, but I did not attend, you know. Uh, my lawyer attended, but not only to protest that this was not a leg legitimate hearing, you see. Now, um, but in any event, uh, something good came out of the hearing because uh, the U.S. government gave several exhibits. A and one of the exhibits completely destroyed their case. I mean, what, they had no case at all, but I mean, what case they pretended to have, let's say. This is a copy of my 1997 uh, passport application that I made 
uh, in Bern, Switzerland to get my passport that was later on destroyed. See? And on this passport application, I, uh, this, was, uh, this was made, uh, uh, I think it was uh, January 24th, 2000, uh, 1997. Okay? On the passport application, I gave my P.O. box. You know, this, this is, a, this is a, a bad copy, but anyway, you can see P.O. Box 50917, Pasadena, California, 91105, USA. So they've had, they had an easy, uh, easy way to, to notify me all along. If they had this Allegra letter, why didn't they just send it to my P.O. Box, right? That I, what, what more natural place to send me a letter revoking my passport than to the address I gave on my passport application, right? But they didn't send it there. And they, and they admit they didn't send it there because they say we were unable to properly notify him until he was located in Japan on July 14, 2004.